notification that the sanctuary, so to speak. Yeah, right. and, and how you and how you issue visas for mm-hmm. anyone that chooses to come to your to your land. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do next question. Do we have people within our membership that can formulate and investigate marketing of Acadia, or is that something that you are planning on having done? Uh, no, I'm not planning to do that. And that's a good question. I mean. I, I'm still committed to ensuring that the management of the web, the management of the knowledge, the creation of the of the communities uh, is underway by the end of the year. Because I've said that this this year I switch from being a doer to being a visitor from from next year, and to, all a visitor is is just someone that can come and visit, really. Um, and, and that's because uh, if well, a number of reasons I won't go into it again, but but obviously it's about being like everyone else and, and proving that that uh, the idea is for everybody. Um, and that, to that end, if someone has ideas of marketing, they should you know go forward and, and look at that. I mean, I'm I'm not in. Um, I don't wish to be in control. What I'm hoping is that uh, communities will view their own issues and will look at ways to promote and encourage others and show others what this knowledge can do. And then that, that happens, but um, the short answer is no. I don't have a specific plan on marketing, and nor do I plan to control that process either. I mean, that's up to each and every group. All right. So basically, it's in the hands of the communities and societies themselves to Correct. come together if they decide to to uh, want to bring the information forward and how to do that. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, on the custody in request, the question that we were talking about just a few minutes ago, um, and that EDP process, uh, what about the instances that are between the parents regarding uh, visitation and, <clears throat> you know, who has custody between the parents and what kind of rights those are? So this is maybe just an argument between parents as well, and not just the fact that it's uh, social workers or somebody else making an accusation uh, outside Correct. of our society. But can you cover that just a little bit? Well, I mean, the issue of disputation, I and mean, you're talking about two parents having a disputation that's then affecting the custody, custody issues of the children, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that that that's really what it amounts to. the the problem The problem when that occurs is that the system kind of encourages that kind of division because it senses opportunity. So rather than arbitrating and resolving it, uh, in in often cases there is uh, a exacerba- exacerbation by you know quote unquote do gooders that say, well, you know, get a an apprehended violence order, or, or get some kind of um, thing on the on the on the books that encourages you. And look, when when marriages fall apart at the moment, I mean, the acr- acrimony can be extraordinary. So, I I think there's no way to if people are going to behave badly. And parents are going to behave badly and use children as a shield and sadly divorce frequently. I would even say usually, because it is usually, usually involves at least one parent behaving extraordinarily badly in terms of using the children as a, as a pawn. Then what role really should the society play? Because if the society comes in and starts acting on that when the parents themselves are not prepared to behave properly, then guess who gets the blame and guess what happens? It makes it worse, yeah? Yes, it very well could. It really needs to be um, one of those things that as far as being uh, competent to handle your affairs and do that using those keys uh, and those virtues that we've discussed tonight. 
Now, what I would suggest is uh, we live in alien nations that have now structured themselves so that a state or a, uh, an apparatus that is highly centralised that could be hundreds if not thousands of miles away from where people live end up making decisions rather than the local community. Yes? Yeah, that's pretty much. Mm-hmm. If a local community is able to manage its affairs, then I would suggest to you a bit like a village and village elders, and I'm not talking about Salem, I'm talking about you know, an enlightened type environment, could be, in fact, a, an incredibly enlightened form where the community takes an interest in its community members. Yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. Which opens up a whole host of, of ways to resolve the kind of disputes that you hear about. I'll give you another one, neighbours. How many times do you hear about neighbours literally getting to a point where they want to shoot one another? It's happening everywhere, isn't it? Stress. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. So how can a state arbitrate when the state has no emotional investment it's just simply viewing it as the kind of the god on high when really a community should should ensure that disputes between members are are adequately arbitrated so this is a different way of viewing a community a community is a community it's not a, an army of of slaves that that bow to some great centralised God a thousand miles away. That's the problem of the system today, is that people are coming out of some central apparatus, driving for 50 or 100 miles or 20 miles, making decisions. They don't live in the community. They're not connected to the members. They really are doing their job, making a quota, and in most cases, making the problem worse. That's not how UK is structuring itself. That's not how we're structuring Yeah, uh, well, just real quick, I think we're uh, about at the end of our time. Uh, not sure how much uh, time you're wanting to allot, but this is our normal wrap-up uh, wrap up time. Uh, there's a, a question here that um, I know that uh, folks need to get on the website and read uh, their, for the processes there. And this is a question that new people are, go- are going to ask on a on a regular basis, just needing some guidance on where to start, what is the order of priority in the works for documents and processes that are at hand right now? Very good. Okay. We had the question asked, how do I open up myself and connect myself? And we answered that by start reading the journeys. But if you are wanting to get on top of process, the very first process you need to consider is your claim of right, which we describe as the ecclesiastical deed process. And you go to one-heaven.org, you go to the home page, and on the home page you click the blue box, well, there are a few blue boxes, but the one that says ecclesiastical deed poll, explanation, steps, and uses. Click on that box, start at the top, Read each page and you will see, if you do read each page, you will see exactly what to do. And if you get stuck, then you go to university.ukd.info and, uh, and, and look at the forums. And that's what you do. Read and then follow what's there once you read and understand. And if you've got questions, go to the forum. And uh, if, you, if you're struggling, by the way, there is already Facebook uh, community there is um, uh, on Skype a whole lot of excellent groups there. So it's not as if there's nothing around. Um, there is a, an increasing interaction of people and it's not being centrally controlled. It's people taking it up themselves and, uh, and just reach out and communicate because there are people everywhere that are happy to help and, and communicate. Yes, that, that helps a lot, and that's probably what the beginning of that question earlier was really about, is really where do folks get started? Where, is it, where should they go? I mean, you know, they obviously need to read the canons as they can and the covenant, but 
you know, when they are dealing with some things at hand uh, right now and things resonate well with them, where should they go to get started and, and uh, in their processes? So that helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, if uh, One more question. If you type in your baby in a time converter, uh, baby, I guess, what time the baby was born, and it gives you a different time each time. What does that mean? Uh, well, the decaded time and space is based on hundredths of a second. So when you go back to the timer, it only gives you minutes. So hundredths of a second means you're going to get slightly different numbers every time you do it. Now, <clears throat> Uh, if you know the exact second of your birth, then sure we can update the update the um, time converter. But at this point, um, it's just asking for the hour and now the minute. It used to just be groups of minutes. It's now up to the minute, the hour, uh, and the day, the month, the year, and it will produce the number. That's the reason. Okay. So, in other words, you don't want them to enter the the date and the time several times for just one baby. You just go ahead and take for what you know. Pick the number, just, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, are, we are, we we do have um, the ability to make sure there are not duplicates coming through. You know, I've, I made a mistake early on with a, with a duplicate number, which we fixed, but that was just the early stages when this was getting turned on. But now right. the checks are there, and there shouldn't be duplicates. All right. Right. So, so just take when you when you type in the baby's uh, birthday and um, born hour and minutes, if you know that, um, then that's the number that you take when it spits that number out. Correct. Correct. And if you come up with a different number, just realize that it's because the time converter is calculating on hundredths of a second that you will get potentially a different looking number only because it's going down to hundredths of a second. That's all. Okay. And there's right. a reason for that because the, the register system, we haven't started transactions yet. And when we do transactions, we'll be calculating numbers at hundredths of a second. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to handle the uh, entering the information if you don't know the hour? Uh, in the minutes of the birth? Well, just don't change them. Just keep them the way they are. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Then, um, well, Frank, do you want to do a closing on um, a summary on our discussion and we'll, we can call it a night and uh, we'll Absolutely. be getting back together next week. Is that correct? Yes, please. Yes, please, okay. and, and I really appreciate you doing a wonderful job hosting, Terry. Thank you. Well, yeah, look, firstly, let me thank you formally, Terry, for, for uh, doing an excellent job in hosting tonight, as you have been. I want to thank everyone that's come on the call. I know it, it, it's a lot of time. You know, it, these are long calls, but there's a lot of information, and I try and make them, we try and make them as, as interactive and, and as informative as possible. Thanks for all those that will listen to the call. I hope you find useful um, guidance and support, encouragement and information and just know that I'm working on this every day and certainly the Canon's update will be there next week and again um, we just keep going, we keep going, moving, learning and every resistance, every loss, uh, everything is an encouragement and a reinforcement that we will not give up and I'm certainly not giving up. So thanks again Terry, thanks to everyone. Yes, we thank you, Frank, and thanks for joining us today, and you have a good day, and we'll see everyone next week. And that's a wrap for tonight, and thanks, everyone, right. for joining us, and have a great week. Thank you. Night. All right. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.